hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Maggie Moreland. I am a holistic health practitioner, currently studying to be a doula, and I am 38 weeks pregnant today. Um, on this channel, I like to share all things natural, non-toxic living, um, as well as women's health and pregnancy, and they're all kind of like sit down, casual, chatty videos. In today's video, I wanted to share kind of like a 38 week pregnancy update slash all things third trimester. Um, so I haven't created an update like this um, since probably the end of my second trimester, early third trimester. So I wanted to kind of recap everything that's been going on uh, for the past two to three months. Because I'm going to be giving you such a big update, this video may be a little bit longer uh, than some of my previous videos, um, but I'll be sure to leave uh, a couple timestamps in the description box so that if you wanted to skip ahead to certain things, you can feel free to do that. I do have some notes down here that I will be referring to throughout this video, so if you see me looking down, just referring to the notes. So I feel like throughout the entirety of my pregnancy because this is my first pregnancy um, I haven't had like a super big belly pop but I have noticed in the third trimester my belly has grown so much compared to the second trimester I compare pictures from like June which is around like the end of June was like 20 weeks um, to now and holy crap like there is definitely a pop I guess with that, um, the, or the reason why that has been happening is because I've just been hungry all the time. I have heard things about the third trimester being the most important in terms of like nutrition for the baby, um, but my body has definitely been demanding more food um, and more frequently, I would say. Uh, I've definitely wanted to eat anything and everything. Um, but I do have some days too where I don't really want to eat a whole lot or sometimes I eat a meal bigger than I guess I needed and I'm not hungry for kind of a little while. Um, so I've definitely been finding like this balance with what I'm eating, how much I'm eating, how frequently I'm eating, but I've definitely been eating significantly more in the third trimester. I did experience a little bit of um, insomnia, and not insomnia where like I can't fall asleep, um, but just where I would be waking up in the middle of the night to like go to the bathroom and then I wouldn't be able to go back to sleep. I did find that by having a snack before I go to bed or like eating closer to bedtime, um, I don't wake up in the middle of the night. When I was waking up in the middle of the night, the only thing that would put me back to sleep was eating a snack. So I found if I eat that snack before I go to bed, I don't wake up, or when I do wake up, I'm not staying awake in the middle of the night. Um, so I'm really grateful that that is not something that happens all the time. It still happens sometimes, and I'm totally okay with that because I hear so many women who deal with pregnancy insomnia, and I'm just grateful that I have dealt with as little of that as possible because sleep is so important to me and without sleep I literally cannot function. So kudos to all the women out there who are pregnant currently and struggling with insomnia. I have no idea how you're doing it right now. I have also noticed um, kind of like an increase in my intuitive abilities. So I've always been kind of in tune with myself and connected to my inner knowing, but I have noticed recently that I'm able to like feel things better or more intensely than before, um, or, or kind of like predict things to happen. Like my gut feeling is super accurate. I've noticed it's just increasing in accuracy and I'm sure it has something to do with like your motherly instincts kicking in or something like that but I've noticed a definite like increase in my intuitive abilities. 
I've also noticed that my body gets tired a lot easier. Um, thankfully, I am no longer working at my job. Um, I'm not going back. I actually got a new job, but that's a story for another day. But I'm really grateful because I'm not on my feet um, all the time. But when I was, it was hard, like standing on your feet all the time for like an eight hour shift, doing physical things constantly and even sometimes going for a long walk just exerting any amount of energy especially in excess um, like makes me so tired my body gets so tired like my feet will start to hurt you know my body's like okay we're kind of done doing this now um, also you know my heart rate increases easier than before like if I walk up a hill my heart rate increases whereas before I could like run up a hill and that would only increase my heart rate a little bit um, so I've definitely noticed that my body does fatigue a little bit more um, and I think that it is that's like just a sign of uh, your body getting ready for labor um, and what I mean by that is you know your body is trying to tell you to rest a little bit more and kind of reserve your energy because you have a big um, a big thing coming up a big marathon as some people like to call it uh, coming up that doesn't mean you should stop training for the marathon um, like I like to continue to go for walks and get some daily movement in every day make sure that I am staying active but not over exerting myself because I do have a little less energy and I am carrying like a lot more weight than I was before and than what I'm used to there was a period um, probably about a month ago so around 32 to 34 ish weeks where I kind of plateaued and gaining weight and my midwives they didn't seem super concerned about it I was like yeah I didn't gain any weight this week or you know at that time I was going every two weeks so in two weeks I didn't really gain any weight it actually seemed like I lost some weight um, they were like yeah it's not a big deal a lot of women plateau around this time other women gain weight a little bit later yada yada um, and so when I went to my appointment after that so two weeks later I had actually gained five pounds so my weight has been fluctuating a relative amount um, this past week at my appointment so I'd gained this five pounds and now I'm going to see uh, the midwives every week so I gained five pounds and then when I came back a week later I gained another pound so I feel like I'm one of those women who is kind of putting on m the majority or more weight in the third trimester or towards the end of the pregnancy than I I did in the beginning and every woman carries differently but I don't know if you can relate to that um, if you've been pregnant before or currently pregnant in the third trimester did you gain uh, more weight than previously or I don't know it probably has something to do with me being so hungry and eating so much food <laughs> so a really big thing that has been happening for quite some time now over a month probably six weeks plus is my urge to nest and I heard this before I was pregnant and women talk about it all the time and just their urge to nest when they are pregnant and I was like okay you're getting your house ready I get it but the urge to nest is real um, so Keith and I have been doing so much stuff around the house getting ready for baby um, I'm really grateful because our baby is so loved already we have so much family and uh, we actually had two baby showers and we received a lot of things for the baby not in excess I'm going to be creating um, uh, like my baby registry review video on what I put on my baby registry and things that I received um, but I definitely feel like we have everything we need and I am so grateful for that um, but with that you know we've had to figure out like how to rearrange the living space and how to make space for all the baby's things and washing all the baby's things and kind of getting the 
co-sleepers set up and putting the car seat in the car and I've been cleaning like all the time um, doing lots of baby laundry getting all the clothes ready packing all the bags all the things I've been in nest mode like 1000% like all I've been doing is nesting I also have more time now that I am home um, from work but I've been cooking some things I baked a cake and you know I just feel very like stepping into um, motherhood and really preparing for the baby's arrival because technically you know the baby could come any day whenever the baby wants to come the baby's coming so it feels really good to kind of have all the the necessities in place for when that time does come but I was just joking with Keith last night about I was like what am I supposed to do now that everything is done um, but you know there's always more things that you can do so the urge to nest is real and I'm feeling it and I'm just gonna continue to tidy up and get ready and do little things um, that I feel are necessary uh, for the baby's arrival so in the third trimester you have kind of like um, I don't know, I, I like to call them like a big appointment, um, but most of my pregnancy appointments, like throughout my whole pregnancy, have been kind of just like check-ins, like, oh, how you doing, how you feeling, everything's good, awesome, good, great. Um, but there's been like some milestone appointments. So recently I actually had one of those milestone appointments, which is your 36 week appointment. And in this appointment, they actually, um, typically do a group beta strep test. Um, so group beta strep is like a streptococcal virus, I guess, that we carry on our skin. It's super normal. Um, but if we have it in excess, especially in the vagina or like um, perineum slash rectum, um, then it can cause like a strep infection in baby when they come through the birth canal. It's very small percentages, like 30% of women have too much of this bacteria. Um, and then there's a very, very small percentage that something will actually be like transmitted, I guess, to the baby. But they like to test you for it because if you have excess, they'll want to administer antibiotics when you're in labor to kind of get rid of the excess bacteria. You can decline the antibiotics um, anyways. So we had that test and it was actually a really empowering appoint appointment um, because I've had some like history with just not feeling empowered at like a gynecologist's office or a doctor's office in general. Um, but I was actually able to administer this test myself. It's just a simple swab from like the vagina and then around to like right outside of like the, the rectum. Um, but I was actually able to administer this test. You know, my midwife actually asked like, oh, cause I asked her what the procedure looked like and she explained it and I was like, oh, okay, like no big deal. And she was like, you can actually do it yourself if you want. And I was like, I would love to do it myself. Like how empowering to go into a situation and not feel like somebody is um, like telling you what you have to do or trying to like do this thing to you that might be a little uncomfortable. You might not feel super great about but to go in and somebody like be like, yeah, you could do this yourself. Um, so that was like a really great experience for me. At this appointment, we also did a swab for chlamydia and gonorrhea, not because I think that I have these STDs, um, but we are declining the erythromycin eye ointment. And in order to do that and for the midwives to feel comfortable, you know, we'll wanna make sure that there are no STDs. So that was negative as well. And from here on out, um, so they have been measuring the the length, the length of my, I think it's called your fundal length, but it's like the length of your uterus from your pubic bone. Um, but now they are simply um, feeling the baby to make sure the baby is in the right position and they can kind of estimate the weight of the baby using their hands, which is interesting. Um, so we did that at that appointment as well, as well. And the baby is head down, which I'm also really grateful for um, because that means baby is in the right position to be birthed vaginally and preparing for their arrival. 
So other than the 36 week appointment, I have been um, going to see an acupuncturist regularly. Um, acupuncture can help with stress relief. It can also help to reduce the amount of time that you're in labor by about two and a half hours. And it can also help to get things going with labor. Um, so I've been going weekly, not for like an induction or anything like that, but just to kind of help my body move along and, and do all the right things. Um, and I have found it, I guess, stress relieving. You kind of just lay there, there's nice music. Um, but I'm really hoping that by using this modality, I have um, a little bit easier labor and birth experience, but we'll see. I'll have to do a video after we have the baby to, to even see if, you know, it, my labor is any different uh, than other women's labor who don't do acupuncture. I've also been using my birth ball a ton, and a birth ball is simply like a yoga ball or exercise ball um, that you inflate and you can kind of bounce on it to um, help the baby position themselves properly, but it also helps the baby kind of move down into the pelvis. So I've been doing like hip rotations, like in circles on the ball. Um, I've also been doing like lunges to kind of like open up my hips, uh, as well as pelvic tilts to kind of move the baby in that way. And there's also like a figure eight motion that you can do. Um, they say like if your baby is breech or if the baby's head isn't down, um, birth, ball, birth ball exercises are really helpful to kind of get the baby into the right position. Keith and I uh, have been taking some birth classes over the past couple of weeks. Um, we took three classes that were actually uh, required by the birth center to have like your baby at the birth center because you do go home like super super quick after you have the baby whereas at the hospital you would stay and there's nurses and people to help you take care of everything um so we took a childbirth series which was four classes um, we also took a breastfeeding class and a first days at home class and i found all these classes to be super helpful um, i would highly recommend if it is like your first time having a baby uh, to probably take some kind of class at least like a childbirth class to like familiarize yourself with the process and what's going on i think it's really empowering to have information and kind of like do your homework and know what exactly you're getting yourself into um so these classes were very helpful and um we you know keith and i we love learning and this is like the greatest thing ever um so we're learning a lot about being pregnant and having a baby um, but we've also been, you know, reading um, some materials on our own to kind of educate ourselves a little bit further. So some of the books that we have been reading, um, I just finished reading Breastfeeding Made Simple by Nancy Moorbacher, and I'll be sure to list these in the, des the description box as well. Um, so that book was really awesome, super in line with like my like worldview, um, and she's really, uh, knowledgeable about breastfeeding and how to make it work and how it is natural and um, can be simple so I really liked that book um, Keith is currently reading husband um, husband coached birth uh, by Robert Bradley um, so it's like the Bradley method of birthing where you know your husband or your partner kind of coaches you through the the birth process which I found to resonate with me really well. Um, we also read a natural childbirth book, um, which was the Bradley Method as well. I've also read a little bit in the baby book by um, I think Martha and William Sears, uh, which has a lot of information. They touch a little bit on pregnancy and birth in that book, but it's more about uh, kind of like your baby growing up and like things to be aware of. So I haven't read that one in its entirety, um, but I definitely plan on doing that. The last couple of things that we have been doing during this time, um, we have been finding a pediatrician 
Uh, thankfully, we found a really awesome pediatrician who we feel like um, we can have a really good relationship with and really help our child thrive, um, which is really nice. We really wanted to connect with somebody and be able to have like open dialogue with somebody about questions um, that we had about our baby and really make sure that the person that is caring for our child has our child's best interests in mind. Um, so we found a really awesome pediatrician, which I'm super excited about. And I also, um, I wasn't like 100% satisfied with the breastfeeding information that was provided at the class we took. So I sought out um, another lactation consultant. Our pediatrician actually recommended a lactation consultant and we had been in contact with her as well and um, kind of had a call with her to go over her method about breastfeeding uh, and things like that. I'm really passionate about breastfeeding. I really want to put my, or have my best foot forward um, and be as prepared as possible because I can just see myself breastfeeding for a decent amount of time and being successful doing that. And I want to know that other people out there uh, want you to be successful as well. I think that's really important. So I feel like we really have a good support system for after the baby is born. But yeah, like I said, like this is kind of like all things third trimester. This is not just what I've been doing in the last week. Um, I've been doing these things kind of over the past three months um, or two and a half months I guess uh, but really a lot of my time has been dedicated to just relaxing and remaining stress-free as well as properly nourishing my body making sure that not only am I getting enough food um, but I'm also getting like nutrient-dense food because it's just such an important time the baby is finishing and maturing in the womb and you know we want to make sure that all the all the pieces come together for a happy healthy child um, but yeah I'm really excited Keith and I are getting really excited and we are just anticipating this baby coming and the baby could be here at any day um, a lot of first-time moms I've heard do go later um, but then again some moms go earlier so we don't really know, um, but it feels really good to be prepared and have a good support system and kind of a plan um, for after the baby comes as well. I'm sure that I will miss being pregnant <laughs> after the baby comes, but I know that the baby is going to bring us so much joy and we are just going to fall in love with the process and the challenges that are parenthood. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, if you like videos like this, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up. Um, I'm going to continue to post uh, videos even when I have the baby. I've been kind of like backlogging. So when you see this video, I will probably be uh, almost 40 weeks, like 39 weeks in a couple of days. Um, so I've been kind of backlogging so that content will be coming out even if I'm not producing it, um, which is exciting. I feel really good about that too. Um, so yeah, give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to stick around for my journey and the journey of this baby, uh, feel free to subscribe.